side as the President of the Olympic Council of Ireland following his arrest in Rio yesterday. Vicky is facing three charges after his arrest by Brazilian fraud police who are investigating alleged ticket touting. Join me with that story, our media consultant, Orla Carmody, and CEO of Sport for Business, Rob Potter. Guys, good morning to you both. Uh, Rob, I just want to go back over what happened yesterday uh, because it was very shocking and still is very shocking. I know we've familiarised ourselves with the news overnight, but when you heard the news, were you very taken aback? Well, I couldn't believe it. I think everybody was in exactly the same position. Uh, 10 o'clock hour time, 6 a.m. over in over in Rio de Janeiro in the uh, in the rather well appointed hotel at which it happened. And I think as the as the story progressed, as this video broke, you were just talking before going into the break about the difference in the systems. And this is very much more O.J. Simpson than Dublin Castle for an inquiry, which is where it looked as though this was likely to be heading. And now we're in a totally different ballpark altogether. And I think the you know the undignified manner of it was was something that I'm sure will 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 hurt the pride, if nothing more, uh, of of Mr. Hickey. Um, you know they're very serious charges if they are laid against him. But of course we don't know that as things stand at the moment. It's what quarter past three in the in the morning over in Rio. Um, he's still in hospital, uh, to the best of our knowledge. In a stable condition. Yeah. Stable condition. Yeah. yeah. So everything seems to be okay on on, on that point of view. But. But it really was, it was a story that it's been breaking in sort of in gentle waves over the course of the last week. Yes, there was a tsunami. It was yeah. just incredible. And, and perhaps the biggest story that Irish sport, maybe Ireland on an international stage, has, uh, has, has seen in years. Which is an appalling thing to say, isn't it? But that's what, that's, that's what people around the world are thinking of us at the moment. Um, Orla, let's just talk about the charges that have been brought against him. It is de facto illegal in Brazil to type tickets to sell them at a higher level than they were paid for at face value. But what are the other charges? Yeah, well, this seems to be very much the, the point here that, I mean, we're used to touts here. We're used to scalpers. I mean, it's not strictly legal, but it's, it's, it's mm. nearly a way of life outside every game if you leave a stadium or Cook Park. But there, it's very particularly against the law. And it seems to be emerging that the group that was associated with selling the tickets down there, the hospitality group, was actually in 2014 after the World Cup asked very specifically to leave Brazil and a cease and desist in this behaviour. And apparently, somehow they're back on the ground there. And this is where this is all coming from, that actually the tickets with the Irish Olympic Council staff among them were given to the official distributor of the tickets as we know, and somehow or other they found a way into the hands of these people who were specifically not supposed to be there, and that is what is at stake here. And the charges against Mr. Hickey are all again. The charges, as you say, haven't been brought against him yet. Yeah. But the charges which we believe are going to be brought against him are all around that, and they are considered very, very serious in Brazil. And apparently, a seven foot jail town, as we know. What's fascinating about the coverage we just saw is that the Brazilians are no strangers to this type of arrest and type of confrontation with very well known public figures. They don't, they don't shy away from it. They land in there with the cameras at the ready, ready to put it up on the media instantly. And that's how we saw, as you said, this most undignified um, It's quite to shocking to us. It seems, it seems somehow unfair and underhand, but that is how they do things over there. It is how they yeah. do things over there. And you know, when you talk about the conversations people might have, they might say to any 71 year old elderly man to be paraded like that in his dressing gown is undignified and is not nice, but it's the way they do things there. They're very confrontational, they're very with the media, they're very much out front. You know, in media, sort of advisory terms, as I would be doing with people, it's always about, well, do tell your story, don't go to ground. You don't need to tell that to the Brazilians. They get out there with their story and they keep giving us information, which is good in media terms, but it's the way they do business. And what other information we saw was the letter um, from senior counsel giving advice to Pat Hickey with that phrase, to put Shane Ross back in his box. Very interesting that, and again, that that's released and it's unfair that that's released. I was quite shocked that that was released. Yeah. Extraordinary, but that's yeah. the way they do business. Very interesting article in this morning's paper by Vincent Hogan in The Independent, giving all the background to this, and again, some of the uh, some of the glee, maybe, with which this is all being reported and covered. And a lot of it comes stems, apparently, from, and I don't know the man, but from Pat Hickey's personality. Because in this interview, uh, Vince Hogan refers to an interview he did a number of years back in London after the Olympics. And it was to do with uh, Mr. Hickey being pictured with Putin and uh, Cameron, David Cameron. And he's saying, yes, these are my family. These are my people. And then even in relation to the Irish Olympic Council, when, uh, when there was an effort a number of years back to actually subsume it into the uh, sports authority. And um, Hickey again, Mr. Hickey again, is quoted as saying, um, 
people are out to get me. They're out to kill down me, kill down my organization, as if the organization was him and the individual. So that seems to be, if we're to believe it, the personality of the person behind all of this, which is why there might be that element of, well, why is this happening now? Uh, Rob, Shane Ross is winging his way probably as we speak back, back to Ireland. What happens now? It is, it is going to be very challenging. Um, Daniel McConnell in the Irish Examiner, who has been ahead of this story all the way through, and he broke the original story about Michael O'Reilly's um, uh, drug test failure, which seems like a, an eternity ago now. Um, he's, he's writing this morning about inside sources within governments which say that the funding, which in 2016 was 520,000, is going to be suspended to the Olympic Council of Ireland on the basis that government should use all of its levers. And in a sense, we have to look at who, who are likely to suffer from that. Um, Patrick Key and the Olympic Council of Ireland are not going to suffer in personal terms. Um, Gary and Paul O'Donovan, Annalise Murphy, Thomas Barr, who we'll see later on this afternoon. This is a this is a story which has got victims in in terms of reputation, in terms of their future, uh, which goes way beyond the norm. Um, I think it's an important point to make as well. Some of the newspapers have, have, have picked it up today. This isn't a this isn't a, a, a go get them against. Patrick, or against Ireland, or against the, the PRC. In Brazil, they really are struggling with the financials around these Olympics. Uh, there's a serious threat to the Paralympic Games as to whether it would go ahead in you know in real danger terms. And there's a court ruling now in Brazil which has said that no more public money can be spent. The, the, the important element of it from this point of view is that the local organizing committee, the way that they get money back is through the sale of tickets. All of the billions we hear about that goes into sponsorship stays with the rights holder, stays with the IOC. The global uh, broadcast revenues stay with the rights holder as well. So, and, and we may face this with a bid for the for the Rugby World Cup. You get your money back by selling tickets on the ground. And tickets are down. Sales are down at these Olympics. We've seen yeah half empty stadiums. Empty yeah, stadium. yeah. Now these tickets are at the top end, so there you know there, there's still likely to be a demand for those, albeit not as much as as was anticipated. And I think that. That may be where this is all sort of come from. The, you know, the idea of, of, of having tickets and being an authorised ticket reseller is great when you consider that it's going to be, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll get the ticket and there's an immediate buyer over there. In this case, there wasn't. And there's a variety of reasons why that was. But you ima- I would imagine that the process, perhaps, that would normally have taken place has actually sort of fallen between the cracks a little bit. That may be, may be the potential. And there's a, there's a big leap which the Brazilian police now have taken to suggest that there's criminal activity, that there is, you know, that there are arrests likely to, likely to be made, charges likely to be proffered. Um, it's, you know, it, 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 trying to get to the bottom of it is going to be incredibly difficult. But we don't know where the next twist or turn is going to come from on this. And there will be a few twists and turns, I would imagine. Will there be an inquiry here, Rob? I think inevitably, I think that once once the politicians have sort of stood up and said that they, you know, they need to, they, they, they can't back down, they won't back down. And and it's right because I think all of us as, as citizens, we need to know there is a duty of care. Now, the you know, the Olympic Council would sort of would argue that well, sport and politics should never mix. Sport and politics are so inextricably linked, it's it, it's 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 beyond uh, crazy to say that. Um, they will liken perhaps the you know the interference of government with the interference of government in, in other parts of the world. So we would talk, talk, we would say no, they should retain their independence from government. Well, but this is public money. Um, 1.7 million over the last Olympic cycle that has gone through the Olympic Council of Ireland, not two, I would hasten to add, but 520,000 in this year. That's serious money, and you know for. For, for the Olympic Council to get up then and say, well, no, we don't need any oversight. We're, we're grand as we are. I think that was a misstep. And I think the government has long memory, unfortunately. The government now will be thinking as much about next year's budget. And post-Olympics, sport was always likely to be struggling a little bit to actually sort of maintain the levels of, of funding that it wanted, never mind, get back to the levels that we used to be at. I think that task has become more difficult now. And... Uh, you know, once there's a once there's a sense of uh, you know of, of the, the possibility of something wrong being done, and it's only a possibility. Yeah, they are um, just allegations, yeah. Exactly. That's when government needs to step in, and there will be the case. Of it is that at the end of all of these Olympics, we will remember it for all of this, and the boxes sent home that we won't remember it for the wonderful Cork twins. Well, I will remember the Cork twins from Annalise for Thomas for everyone who's done. I haven't named near half of them, but it's been a wonderful Olympics, and we'll see if good efforts come out. Should, should, should we hear something from Shane Ross? People saying he's been very quiet over this. Uh, he has to be very careful about what he says, but should he make a statement? Yes, I think he should. Yeah. And I think um, he, he was probably right to go out to the Olympics, although people are saying, now, what was he doing going out there and what's he doing turning around coming back? He had to go out there 
And in fact, the fact that you went out there maybe expects this percentage of things to, a, to an extent we don't know. So it was taken a bit more seriously. And again, I think he's probably right to come back now and, and respond to it, but I think he does need to respond. Okay, thank you both very much for your interesting conversation there. Now, let us know your thoughts on any of the topics we have just discussed. You can text AM followed by our comments to 5313 when you can email rndm at tv3.ie. You can Facebook us or you can tweet us at rndm tv3. But right now, let's take a look at the traffic with Jack. Yeah, today's search is wet, sir.